everyone. Today we are going to talk about a spectacular miniature game, Village Attacks by Grimlord Games. Village Attacks is a game suited for ages above 14, from 1 to 5 players, with an approximate duration of 120 minutes. The main goal in the game is to protect the heart of the castle from the villagers. Boards and Cards The most important boards and cards are Monster Board. Apart from the illustration, name, and class, it shows Role. There are three types. Guardian, Support, and Decimator. Experience. The amount of XP the monster needs to acquire a new skill or improve an existing one. Help. How much damage the monster can take. Dice Zone. Here, we will assign the dice each turn. Skill Zone. In this zone, we can see the different monster's skills. The first one is the base skill, and it can be improved later. There, we see the cost of performing it, the skill range, and if a line of vision with the target is needed or not. If this symbol appears, it means it's not necessary. General Board It shows Heart of the Castle. It tells the heart's health. If it reaches zero, monsters lose. Village Morale Each time a villager dies, it drops one point. If a hero dies, then it drops two points. Village Events During the villagers' phase, the value increases as many numbers as monsters are in the game. When it reaches certain values that the mission tells, it triggers an event in the village. Traps This zone is for setting traps. Monsters can buy them from here. Hero Sheets They are more powerful villagers, and so they have their unique characteristics and skills. We can see on their sheets, their health, how many zones the hero can move, damage caused, range of attack, skill, class. The monster who shares class with the hero will be his nemesis. The hero will cause plus one damage to that monster. Trap Cards When they are bought, they are immediately placed in the zone of the monster who bought it. Here is showed the symbol needed to buy the card. In this part, we see the description of the effect caused. And in the lower zone, we see where the trap can be placed. Corridor, big rooms, small rooms, or all. And what kind of villager it affects. Peasants, hunters, heroes, or all. Event cards. They are triggered when the dial lands on or passes the value detailed in the mission setup. These events can have a one-time effect that is immediately applied or a permanent effect that will be active until a new card appears. Setup. First of all, choose the mission you want to play and build the board. Mark the health of the castle and the village morale according to the mission. Separate the four troll cards from the event deck and put them back in the box. Put the decks on their corresponding places. Each player chooses a monster and takes their board and skill tokens. Take the class tokens of the monsters in the game into the fabric bag. Put the different tokens and dice next to the scene. Reveal the first trap and one respawn card for each villager respawn zone. Give the coin to the first player, and everything is ready to play. Game Round Each game round is divided into three phases. Monsters Phase The active player roll the dice and assign them to the different actions depending on their results. With this symbol, the monster causes one melee hit. With this one, one hit at distance one. This symbol serves to activate some skills or healing wounds and altered states of the monsters in the heart of the castle. This other one makes the villagers further away from the castle move forward one zone. This movement doesn't trigger any trap. They are immediately discarded. This one blocks up to two damage points. And with this symbol, the monster counterattacks the villager, causing the same amount of damage received. In defense, the defense and retaliation dice are assigned. Each shield dice blocks two damage points, but they can't be combined to block one attack of four damage points. In reserve, any symbol assigned is reserved for later using. At the end of the turn, the player receives a token. With the assigned symbol, you roll the dice less for each of these tokens. In movement, any type of dice is assigned. For each dice, the monster moves one zone. If you want to leave a zone with villagers in it, the monster's health must be higher than the number of villagers. The attack dice are discarded if they are used up for combat. You always attack first two peasants, then hunters, and finally heroes. The player is granted with one experience point for each farmer or hunter defeated, and two points for each hero. If the hero shares class with the monster, the player receives three experience points. When the monster reaches the appropriate experience, the player can buy a new skill or improve an owned one. If you got three or more equal symbols, you can re-roll all of the dice of the same symbol. This is also applied to the torch dice. 
The monster can also activate skills and buy traps, spending the corresponding dice. The actions can be performed in any order. Villagers phase. First, the village events vance. If it were necessary, flip the first event card and apply its effect. Then, all of the villagers attack and move, always in that order. They are activated one by one, starting by the nearest zone to the heart of the castle. Within the same area, the peasants are activated first, then the hunters, and finally the heroes. The priority order in the villagers' attack is Nemesis, Heart of the Castle, Monsters within the same zone, and Monsters in the adjacent zones. If there are different options with the same priority, the players will reduce the options to two and toss a coin to decide. If a monster dies, all of the experience, state, and symbols are discarded. In the next respawn, the monster appears in the heart of the castle, and the heart receives two damage points. If the heart was destroyed with this damage, the monster doesn't appear. When a villager enters a zone with traps, this is triggered if it was the proper type of villager. By last, new villagers appear. Draw a respawn card and place the villagers shown at it in a respawn zone chosen by the players. The mission indicates the level of respawn at each moment. When hunters appear, a class token is taken out of the bag. This shows the hunter's class and becomes the nemesis of the monster with the same class. Cleaning phase. In this phase, all of the used traps are discarded and a new one is placed on the general board. Monsters win the game if they achieve the mission goal. The altered states are represented with tokens. This state may affect monsters, villagers, and zones. To increase the difficulty of the village attacks game, you have two options day and night mode. Each round changes, granting benefits for monsters at night and villagers at day. Also, replace a general dice for a special one, depending on the round. The Troll. Add these event cards to the events deck. It destroys everything in its path, both villagers and monsters, and it can't be removed. And that's everything today. Do you already know which your favorite monster is? We have it clear, and we are ready to dismember some villagers. Comment with your impressions on village attacks. Leave us a like, and if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to the channel. See you!